Yes, I know. What about in, in your field? I wish I could say the same thing that I had hope of the government in Brazil, but um, I don't know. <laughs> um, even with I'm the president um, wanting to pull out of the Paris Agreement, which I'm really hoping he's not able to, uh, and it seems like it's going to be. Um, my sense is that it would be very difficult for him to do that, and such a bad idea that he's going to not do it and change his mind. Um, but from um, the region that I live in, in the Amazon Delta, I really see a lot of hope in the municipalities, even though we do depend a lot on the federal government. I think there's a lot of uh, will to change and to adapt because they really leave a very difficult situation and a lot of times people don't really think about the urban Amazon but um, in the Delta region there's more than 1.2 million people who are in risk of flooding and like we were talking you know the most affected is really the people who live in the periphery uh, because these areas are in night and they flood, and there's a lack of sanitation systems. So they're definitely affected a lot in terms of their health. There's so many things that um, are impacted. Um, and it, I really feel that this report shows that the changes are going to have to be um, precedented in terms of land use and in terms of lifestyle. In terms of land use, I really can say that working in the urban delta we feel like there should be like more water cities because there is no space for the waterways. So with the unpredictability of the rain and the flooding of the tides and the river, you really have a lot of still water. So you not only have the problem of um, increasing Malaya and Chikungunya and all these vector-borne diseases, you also have the daily problems of waterborne diseases, diarrhea, and really the, one of the things we found is that single mom households are really one of the most affected in terms of disease and in terms of um, food security. Um, I don't know if I talked too much. Uh, I think maybe uh, it would be nice to hear a little bit from you, Veronica. Thank you. Um, I think we are talking about the, this 1.5 degree uh, issue, but imagine the people that doesn't have this information. I mean, in Guatemala, for example, um, from the holy book from the Maya people, that is the Popol Vuh, it says that we are made from, from corn. We are made from corn. And, um, in, and everywhere in Guatemala, you find corn. Everywhere. It's the base of our uh, um, food. And um, it's a very vulnerable uh, crop, too. And imagine if the people uh, with this in the rural regions that has problems with the uh, crops. They, they, they are not thinking about uh, the heat or they are not thinking about uh, some other issues that are related with this increase of temperature. They are worried about what are they going to eat, uh, what are they going to have a cold out, are they going to have the, the enough money to fool their table, etc. So uh, I'm, I wanted to talk about the corn because uh, you see in the rural region and also in the cities, if, if you have a, a soil in your backyard, you, you see corn. So imagine if the, the corn crop is going to have uh, difficulties. Uh, so, what my people are going to have to. And uh, 
conversation. So this is really getting scary scarier. And with all this put together, when people are able to feed themselves, feed their families, women are able to have uh, access to food for their families, what happens is that they will eventually move. And we have seen instead of people moving from northern part of Ghana to the southern part of Ghana for um, alternative livelihoods. And then again as well, what people are doing now is building the agency of, of the capacity of people. I have a slide you went and that's going to be amazing and very interesting guy. Let's go to enjoy our slide you went, right guys? Sure.